Greetings everyone, hello and welcome back to this very fine day. Glad you're on board of my flagship under the banner of the cat. Welcome back to another N1800 Mega City Survival Edition. And this year, oh boy, we have prepared quite a bit as I'm going to combine several of my previous challenge series into one massive one. Now, what is new about this series is, first of all, you can already see the opponents leaving us behind as well as we are making way for something massive. Um, what you can see first on this fine day is that there is no fog, right? We have no map um, hindrance here. We can see everything clearly. So what's going on? Yep, we're playing on a custom map on this fine day. The old world blues it's called on Nexus mod. You can find it yourself. And it has a very interesting layout that I would like to use for this challenge. We have over here Crown Falls in the old world, which has been integrated just lovely. One giant massive island that we can settle on. We have smaller islands surrounding Crown Falls that are kind of like acting as service islands with neutral traders rather close to them. For example, Archibald here, also Eli on the other side, and also the pirate not that far away. The opponents themselves, however, also have big islands and have lots of room to grow. They have the advantage that they have lots of massive islands close together they can settle on and build giant logistical networks on top of all of that well we are playing with the three versus one mod in the combat overhaul mod that means those three opponents are playing together they are having an alliance right now against us and the pirate now of course that leaves the question how is that fair well first of all we do have this island here to protect ourselves, hopefully. And also we have a few more mods that are making this more interesting, like the World War mod that we can use that enables huge new warships like an aircraft carrier. We also have land turrets finally that enable us to build harbor defenses on the land, right? So we can make more massive defenses and are not restricted by the harbor area. Also on top of that, we have a bit more influence to fiddle around with as well. It's a fine day. A lot of mods have been updated for this game. We're still on our way now to Crown Falls that is coming up there in the distance right now. And before we arrive, before we start this really massive let's play and challenge, and I have no idea if we can survive this, but at least we're going to have a nice, a nice time doing this. We are going to have a look at the difficulty settings themselves. Shall we do this? Now, for the difficulty settings, we're going to have a look at the sandbox mode. As always, we are going to proudly present the banner of the cat again with our silver masked man or gentleman, you might see under a red player color. For the name, we're going with Binbash, one of my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. Hopefully, I'm honoring you enough with that. Uh, for the DLCs, we're going to activate most of them. I would still like to deactivate Emperor of Skies again because I think on a higher difficulty level, the airships are just still not balanced right. Um, and I would also like to deactivate the passage as this is not really adding anything to the game. I would reserve this for the ultimate playthrough then where we really include everything. For the custom settings, it's very important here to choose the old world blues in the map type. So this will make sure that you use the custom map. The rest here doesn't really matter as the old world blues already dictates those difficulties here, right? So it's basically going to be one giant um, building space for everyone really. For the seed, we're going with anything random really. For the characters, now this is really the most interesting part since we're playing with the combat overhaul mod uh, 3 versus 1. So whoever I choose here will go into an alliance um, against us. And for that, I would like to go with Miss Hunt, Admiral Vigent the Silver and Princess Ching. So I'm balancing this out. I know Princess Ching is rather aggressive. Don't get fooled here by the two stars. I know Miss Hunt is the strongest opponent, of course. And the Admiral is, yeah, well, pretty much in between. So we do have a balance of all of them. Of course, they have an alliance against us. So I can't do anything diplomatic wise. For traders, we're going to activate all of them. And I'm also going to choose average pirates as the combat overhaul mod dictates. Don't put it on hard because it's simply broken there. Just play it on average and the pirates are already then boosted pretty significantly. And here we have a chance then, yeah, fiddling around with the pirates, getting into alliance perhaps with them to protect us against the onslaught that is 
most likely coming our way. For the income, I'm going with low settings. Inact inactive upkeep is on. Construction fee, we have to pay. Building relocation is allowed, but we have to pay. Trading restock is rare. City incidents is hard. Quest frequency is rare. Influence this time, I'm going with high settings. This also enables the AI opponents to really build huge fleets. However, of course, it also enables us to build massive harbor defenses. And that is my goal here. Skyscraper upkeep is high, so we still have to pay a significant amount of money later on in the end game, adds that extra spice later on if we survive that long. Starting ships is a flagship only. For the custom map, you need to choose this. Starting harbor does not work. Starting capital is small, so money is going to play an important role early on and of course we're not going to play with any revealed map even though you know what let's actually do this on that occasion here because we know how the map looks it's a custom map and we know exactly where everybody is and yeah it doesn't really matter because i'm not getting any advantage out of that and it's also interesting to see everything at once a uh, victory conditions are off as always um we're playing with open end survival is the important thing and building a massive city these are the settings let's jump back into the game shall we Back on the high seas, we're just passing by Sir Archibald Blake and the big harbor area, the big beaches, the long beaches of Crown Falls are unfolding themselves right in front of us as we make landfall soon. It is noon right now, the sun is high and so far we are alive, but of course that was to be expected. Among others, we have also a new Metro System mod enabled now that is going to well, completely overhaul the end game transportation system once more. So I hope I'm giving you some spicy things here too as well. And yeah, finally we have arrived now. Making landfall finally. This is for all of my uh, sexy Patreon supporters. Thank you for your support as we are settling on this fine island here for ourselves. A pleasant settlement. We're going to call it Panagos. A really mighty name. One of my Patreon supporters as well. Thank you for your continued support. And Panagos is going to be the centerpiece of this drama. Of course, I have no idea if we can survive this. We can, well, make 10 episodes out of this. So we could also make 50 episodes out of this. It all depends, really, how massive the onslaughts are going to be. And something that I always love about this game is how we start Panagos now as a smaller agrarian village and slowly advancing to the industrial age with more factories, slowly advancing to artisans, starting to export goods, import agrarian goods, move on to service-oriented industries and ultimately also providing monuments and tourism services as well. I love that transition and it all starts here. Let's begin! And there we have it now once more our first settlement really with that we can also build the marketplace and thus Panagos is coming to life with also a few first farmers now moving in of course those farmers are not going to supply themselves unfortunately we need building materials we need planks above all to build those houses in the future we still have 20 tons of timber available to us and of course with that we can start a smaller industry now i would like to take a bit more of a realistic approach this time also not you know placing everything super far away that just does not make that much sense we're rather building it closer and continue to move it then gradually over time and here we have a bit of forest system right now available and i would like to use this for my first industry that we have which of course is the plank industry some four sexy lumberjacks can start to work here let's have them distribute it a bit to maintain 100 percent efficiency and then of course we're going to have some of these sawmills now here then as well providing the logs 
or getting the logs provided, that is, from the lumberjacks producing planks out of that. On top of that, let's build them. We have some five farmers available right now. That's not a lot. I'm still going to build them. And since we do need planks urgently, sorry, you poor sorts, I will have to boost you and we're going to increase productivity by 50% right away. Working double shifts in the beginning to ensure our survival is probably going to be a smart move. We still have 10 tons of timber left and with that we can build a few more farmers like this block here that we can almost finish at least. 45 negative right now, that is the demand, so hopefully people are moving in. And with the foundation of Panagos and the beginning of the first buildings, that's already the end of the first day, right? Because as you noticed, the sun is going down right at the moment. It's getting a bit dark now. People are settling in, probably going for some dinner and eating. You've probably also noticed that I'm using some new layouts as well. So we are using quite a few. I'm using the stamp system a bit more extensively this time around. And we have saved a few layouts for later down as well to add ornaments and stuff like that to the game. Like a little fountain probably, little parks that we can use, stuff like that. Now what we also notice it right over here, Princess Ching is settling on the first island now. That was to be expected. What I can also see is that Miss Hunt is closing in on her corner island. So the AI kind of like is restricted to those starting islands in the corners. There's the Admiral. He's still trying to settle on Crown Falls. He does not realize that he's too late. But he's now moving over there to his designated spot. And with that, they're going to build up their own cities. And, yeah, well, they have plenty of room to grow all around them without any danger. I'm really curious how massive those fleets are going to be. But, of course, city building is the focus that we want to have right now. As the sun is going down and people are going into the houses, we, of course, can still continue. And that is with laying out the blueprints of a few more houses. We can have some more dense buildings than here as well, especially closer to the coastline. And we can also have our fountain um, areas then as well. We can even have some double fountain area if I like to, like this one here, for example. I think that would make a good, a good look here. And then I would probably also like to go ahead for something like that. Houses with their own special entrances then as well. Of course, all of this costs me one thing, and that is money. Building roads is not cheap. And right now, we're down to 17,000 credits. We have a negative balance of 120, but 50 people at least now that have moved to Panagos. Reducing our workforce shortage to negative 10 now only. And that means, yeah, well, my lumberjacks are working a bit more efficiently now. What I will still need to do is, and that is once I have the first 10 tons of timber here that we produce, I will need to build another warehouse since this one here only has two loading ramps. And as we can see, it is filling up right now with people waiting to unload the planks. And yep, it's already morning again. The sun is rising on a brand new day in Panagos. And it's the simple life that people have. But not without meaning. And so we can continue now building the next warehouse, finally. And this will relieve that one here of a huge burden. They can share the burden now and more planks should be coming in. We're still stuck at negative 10. That means I probably should build a few more houses. We have four tons of timber. Two more houses I can finish just here in the center. Those farmers, yeah, well, they live the simple life as well. Even have their own well, great for water. They have a new demand now coming up and that is fish. Now we do need to provide that of course. We have a bit of timber again for this. Let's go ahead and build us a fishery right here on the shore of Panagos. Setting sail and hopefully having a good harvest out of the ocean. Please 
Don't leave your crate now another thing that we should actually do right away is looking at the map once more because i can see over here there's a quest coming up madame kahina is offering one so these quests are tiny nit nitpicks for us that we can have to receive a bit of a bonus money there and she wants me a collection quest and I once helped an old colleague escape from a hairy situation she got herself into, and now she acts like I'm her maid, just here to pick up her mess. Look, just bring the dirt to me. Alright, we have to pick up some flotsam. It's really far away. Honestly, it's right here where the Admiral is right now, still trying to find his island. <laughs> and there it is, the flotsam that we need to pick up. And so my flagship, the Sea Harpy, is on its way getting over there, picking it up and bringing it back to Madame Kahina for some nice juicy 2,000 credits that we can earn with that. And we will need that money. 33 tons of timbers coming in. Look at that, how fast it happens now. We can build way more houses with that. Let's finish actually two blocks of farmers and perhaps actually three blocks. Also these guys here. Now this already opens up another demand that my people now will have then soon and that is schnapps and the pub especially with 150 people. As we can see, 80 we have almost, tendency is growing, money is still going down at a rate of 180 per minute. So we need to be careful about our finances there. Finally however we have a positive farmer workforce. And also we have reached the city status of village. Let's continue building a few more houses since we have the planks and kind of like encircling that marketplace here into a full village now. With that, we are also starting to progress now on our level bar. We're still level one, but as we can see, it is moving up. With each level, we gain new bonuses and influence that we're going to need as well. Now, I think we have unlocked something. We have unlocked the pub, a place to drink and celebrate. And I would like to have the pub then also right here in the center, kind of like building a plaza area there together with the market that we can have. And for 10 tons of timbers, it's actually a no-brainer. And with that, we have a pub. We can, of course, add some smaller ornaments to this as people like to celebrate in gardens. Some apple trees for the house cider should not hurt. Let's have two on either side. Let's have three on either side. We need to be careful though and then some patches of grass because of course all of this is rather expensive. A shrubbery might also do just wonders. Very good. This makes people not that much happier yet. We still have an unhappy population thanks to our work conditions. Um, let's use a few more, a bit more timber to upgrade or to build a few more houses that is. And also to build something entirely new now, and that is a new demand that my farmers have, and that is a church or a chapel respectively. For this, I don't need to make room. I, in here in the center, we have this small farmhouse that I can move. Let's move it over there. And instead have us a smaller chapel in place, right? And this chapel is providing then the need for those people. Let's have a smaller entrance for it. There you go, and build. And this finally will make people happy now content population and with that we have a rah, ni nice and cute little village center already formed out in Panagos Of course, we cannot stay idle as I do have business to attend to. We have the next pharma buildings ahead of us and that is actually the schnapps and the workload, two productions. For the workload, I would probably like to stay a bit closer to the city there again. So we're going to have the workload then just over here. For the potato farms, we're a bit further away as fields tend up to take a lot of space really. And for that, there we have the potato farms. Let's just see how we can align them in a good manner so we can still add some more houses then down the road as well. I think this is not so great. I think this is better because that way we can actually do something. We can have more of them together like this, right? And also on that side. Make it those. And we can still add a few more 
if we wanted to. Yeah, let's add actually a few more. We just need to think in a bigger scale here. That's the that's the idea of it. And on either side, we're also going to have then the distilleries of that. So we got six schnapps distillery uh, uh, potato farms in this area. So I'm also going to need me six of these um, distilleries. And the same thing we can apply then to that area here. So let's just go ahead and have us some whopping six of these distilleries. Of course, eh, schnapps distilleries tend to catch fire rather quickly. So beside the warehouses to catch the goods, we will also need to make sure that those guys here have a proper fire protection in the form of a fire station here and also here. Very good. And we can actually start, since we have the timber, with the first potato farm and the first schnapps distillery. And with that, Panagos is entering the agrarian age. And as always, we like to work and like to focus on a few products soon that we can then export. And with that, we can import cheap agrarian products and ultimately get rid of those far farms. So I'm not going to bother with boosting them too much as we don't need them forever. Right now though, it's all we have. Beside that, we can also continue now over here with my cheap farms. So for that, we do need a bunch of them. We, I also will need them for the sail maker. We can have uh, those three here. And we can also then use them like this. Continue onwards. And have some framework knitters for these guys here. Once again, the ratio is one to one. The three of them on either side just work out. Also, those guys here definitely will need some fire protection. Let's have it over here. And also a warehouse, even though we might need to build a second warehouse soon as well. But let's start with this production as well. And with this, we have actually everything provided now that those farmers would like. Of course, it's not everything, but let's continue with building a few more houses since we have the timber. And we start to grow. As day two is coming to an end soon, the sun is already going down again. Jolly good people of Panagos would like to request something from us. By the way, that brings up my other quest that we have. <laughs> Damned wild animals are eating all my hens. Poor things are so terrified they haven't laid an egg in weeks. And it is a puzzle quest. We need to find wild animals roaming the streets of Panagos. On top of that, I can also see that we have some ruins over here. A lumberjack hut burned down. Let's repair it. And for the future, let's be safe because we have the city incidents on hard. Fires are rather devastating, so let's also build us a fire station here right away, providing the services. Let's find us the animals. Before we do that, sorry, let's jump over here to the sea harpy. It has collected the evidence, the compromising evidence, and let's get this back home to Madame Kahina. And since time is of the essence, of course, we're going to sail through the night. Meanwhile, on the streets of Panagos, I have found the wild animal. It's a wolf roaming around, probably trying to slaughter one or two villagers here. So before we can do any damage, let's catch it. And with that, finish that quest as well. We get a mate as compensation. We can equip it in ships for some self-repair. We can use it on expeditions for expedition bonuses, or we can also just sell it for 1,300 credits. Now, in my very happy population at this point, let's continue building some more farmers. Why are they so happy, you may ask? Of course, because we have now also the schnapps provided and the workload is coming in. However, what I can see already is my current consumptions are too high for both of these products, so I do need to expand that production shortly. Let's go ahead and build us some two more potato farms and some two more schnapps distilleries. Can't hurt to also have that fire station just here. 
tiny balance we have a positive one is actually dropping again since we now have built a new industry that is of course costing me and it's also built me two more sheep farms and two more frame refuges And while we wait for more schnapps to come in, let's also continue with the city expansion. I have a bit of space over here, closing it in on the fields, and I would like to continue with that. This is here going to be a potential main road that, that we can use that is separating those districts. Let's actually make it then four tiles. I'm not building all of these yet, of course, because it's quite costly and we're down to 8,000, but it makes a separation, right? And up here, we have a new district. That new district, we can start with some more blocks of houses. Uh, let's actually go ahead and use one of my bigger stems for the T-section that we have and that would be those jolly good buildings here. I like them a lot because they add some nice ornamental sections there and we can have some fountains on both sides and stuff like that for example. Let's have two of them and then probably also a courtyard um, block like this and then also some higher density blocks then again over here. And yeah, let's actually make this a two tile road and then also some density blocks here as well. As this is going to be the town center, of course. As always, ah, those streets are expensive. And a bit later, right over here, we probably will also need then a marketplace. So let's go ahead and build this one together with a pub just across the street or yeah, let's have it behind the market in this case here. And once again, left and right, we do have some space now or some bigger blocks if we want to, like this one that provides entrances to all the farmers <laughs> and also some more buildings up here, probably like this. And then we have the road here connecting our fields with the city. bit of timbers rolling in again in the meantime I would like to build me the remaining farmers that we still have here down by the harbor now by now I'm expecting my ship to arrive there it is sailed through the night to Madame Kahina turning in that quest getting me a bit of reward here of 2500 credit umping it up for us to 10,000 almost again even though we have dropped below that not a long time ago. Now, how is it looking with my supplies for schnapps and work cloth? Of course, we're building a lot all the time. We have to a surplus production now. What is the matter? Not really anything. We just need to wait a bit more. Have a bit of patience, please. Because of course, it takes time for the raw materials coming from the fields to the distillery, being processed and then being delivered to the warehouse. It's all a rather tedious business, if you ask me. We get a newspaper edition, finally, that we can also enable. I was looking, Hell's Eternal Slaves, brutally driven from dawn till dusk, the tyrannized population of Panagos suffer like the yoked beast of Lucifer. City cries out for someone to rise up and put an end to its medieval overlords. Oh, that is a nice title. Thank you very much for this. Uh, I'm not going to allow to print it like that though, because of course we're going to give them something else to work on. Spend, 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 buying things makes us happy. And with that we get another 5% income boost out of the influence that we use. Speaking about influence, we do have a bit more, 100. We have just reached another level here, level 5. Also 1,600 people and 400 on the positive side. That's great of course. And what I can notice is, yes, those farmers are particularly happy right now. They have all the goods that we wanted for them. And with that, they're ready to upgrade and advance finally beyond the fields into the industry. And that is the workers. Shall we do it? Of course. Let's upgrade. And with that, Panagos is advancing to a port town. And we have the worker population finally in place beautiful buildings they are and of course 
very demanding people with sausages, bread, soap and the school they want. Let's go ahead and upgrade a few more as we have a bit of timber there still. Honest work, that's all we ask. Drop snap all over the cobbles. Massive battleship seen in our docks. And that is, of if course, is the anything. Bismarck we're talking about. However, it's not in my do docks. Don't worry about that just yet. This is something for later. Let's upgrade one more building. There you go. Also, in particular, I love how people dress differently in smaller colorful dresses when they become workers, as opposed to the grayish looking farmers. Details everywhere. A pleasant port town it is. And of course, we can continue onwards with... Hmm, let's just have a look. Quests. There is something. Princess Ching would give me a quest here. Princess Ching offers a photography quest. I would like to capture the words of homecoming, a whisper in the wind, but I cannot see the docks from my study. So we need to photograph a sailing ship. This once again is a little free quest. I take them as long as we get them, because of course at some point we're not going to get them anymore. Let's take a photo of a ship and re reap the rewards out of that. Thank you very much. As we noticed though, right, with the settings, they're all in alliance. And of course, Miss Hunt will probably declare war on us first and that will trigger a chain reaction that all the other ones declare war on us. She's already t almost twice as strong as we are at this point. Thank you very much, Princess Ching. Miss Hunt also has a quest for us. Let's enjoy it while it lasts. It's truly terrible how many lives have been taken by the humble spot. I will have the promised trust investigate the toxic properties of the tuber. Please deliver me some samples. 12 tons of potato she wants. That's not an easy task. 2,000 coin? We might be thinking about that. As we can see, Miss Hunt is expanding, expanding to the second island over here already. That was quick. We are only about 37 minutes into this game and she already has a second island that she's going to prepare, of course, for her, well, nasty war industry. Another night creeps upon Panagos. We do have some timber. I would like to use this to increase my worker population further. With that, we are going to unlock a few more buildings and we're increasing now our worker workforce. And so it is, a new day is dawning. It's a bit raining today by the look of it, but of course that will not make it impossible for us to continue the work. And one of that is this one here. The farmer asked me to build a silo for the pig farms. Thank you very much. And this worker quest here. And there's a little gift they have for me. Poor things gave me this for you. And we need to pick it up somewhere. I think at the harp area usually it is. But this one here is, ah, here at the market. What do you have for me? I don't know what it is. It is a surprise gift. An item? No, we haven't received anything from him, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much for this. Thank you very much for nothing. Now we continue though, because with the workers we have unlocked new building materials and that is the bricks. And we need to, well, start working on them right away. In Panagos, we have four clay deposits available for us. We have one over here, 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 and here. This one is the closest one, so we can use this. Now also, I'm going to use something new here for these industries. Up here in the mountains, this road cost me 300 credits there. That is just absolutely not okay. Um, up here in the mountains, we have lots of raw materials. Previously, well, we have built the industries here as well. This, of course, is not very realistic. This time, I'm going to make it a bit different. Look at that. We have some mines here, right? So we have an iron deposit, iron deposit, and the clay deposit. So let's go ahead and build us a warehouse for these jolly good deposits right and that's it and then we're just going to have us the clay pit here as well that is now producing bricks or well clay for us right those poor workers still have to commute to this area but that's the price you have to pay Now the industry itself I would like to have in the harbor area where it makes the most sense for me. So once again, we're going to have two harbor areas in Panagos. We're going to have the industrial harbor. It's probably going to be this area then. And then we're going to have a tourism and beauty building harbor that is going to be this one here, a representative harbor, right, for Panagos. 
This one is better though because it also enables us a very short trading corridor to the new world then. Let's go ahead and start building here something and we could build first and foremost a warehouse once more to not use the docks here. Let's have it a bit further away there. And just beside it we have those brick factories. And we definitely will also need of course a fire station. Let's build them. That was rather expensive. Each one of these brick factories costs me 20 on the balance, 25 workers. And they're now going to collect the clay from the warehouse and make bricks out of that, that we urgently need. However, of course, the bricks will need to be delivered first to the warehouse and there it already happens. Now another thing we can prepare right away while we're in the area and that would be my iron production and my steelwork production. For that we do need an iron mine that we have right over here. And there is another deposit that we can use on top of it. Going for the warehouses. We will also need to produce some coal. We don't have coal mines yet so I do need to produce them with charcoal burners. It's a very dirty business so I'm going to have it a bit further over here. And I would like to start with probably some four of them for the moment. They're going to forest the trees here, reforest them, and burn them ultimately to make coal. Right, so with that, we still need, well, the dirty things, and that is the furnaces. For this, once again, I would like to use this area. Whoa, by, by the way, let's copy those brick factories here just real quick, because we're going to need more of them really soon. And a bit further, we can now have then those furnaces. It's important for the furnaces to notice that we're going to boost them, of course. This is very important. So also, I will use this triple or quadruple road that we have there, really, going into this area then for later, where we're going to have an electricity power plant that is going to boost those factories even further. Let's go ahead and have it like this. And then we know we have the space here now for more factories. And that is, for me at least, the furnaces. Let's start with a few of them. We're not building all of them right away, of course, as they are pretty expensive. I will also need another warehouse then over there as well. On top of that, we need the steelworks, processing the steel then into steel beams, the third building material that we're going to need. For now, let's have them close together. We're going to move them eventually. And yeah, with that, we have the timber. Let's continue with a few more upgrades because we're going to need a lot of workers here soon. How is my consumption looking? The fish is going down, the schnapps is going down, the workload is going down. Let's expand. With more schnapps. Ah, it's going to be costly. We're sitting around 400 there right now. Balance is at 14,000. Let's also build two more sheep farms. And two more framework knitters. And that fire station here too, that we're going to need basically wherever we have industry. Now, what we can see on the world map, all of the opponents have now two islands, expanding as quickly as ever. Where is he? <laughs> He's hidden somewhere. He just settled in okay. His main island, hopefully, is developing a bit better. Yes, he also has workers, for example, now, the Admiral, preparing his economy for the worst to happen, of course. So far, so good. The building materials are coming in. We need to wait now a bit. Panagos has survived at least four days. We're at 1,600 people. Money is coming in a bit. And we can now prepare the steel industry. And with that, the next goods and city expansions, of course. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks again for your support and for watching. Have a nice day and see you in the next episode. Stay tuned.